Kirill Kaprizov's goal against Cam Talbot was so filthy. Kings fans on Twitter are calling it a lucky bounce. Minnesota Wilds pick up a 3-1 to win over the Los Angeles Kings that featured some top-line elite-level play. An insane, sick goal from Matt Boldy and Kirill Kaprizov. A great start from Philip Gustafson and more of the kids. Lots to break down in tonight's Lockdown Wild postcast. Let us get things rolling. You are Locked On Wild Postcast, part of Locked On Minnesota on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Minnesota Wild pick up a 3-1 to one win over the Los Angeles Kings, and tonight's Locked On Wild Postcast is officially underway. Thank you for joining here tonight after the Minnesota Wild pick up a, uh, a fun win against the Los Angeles Kings because, A, it didn't involve the Wild getting their faces caved in. Uh, But we saw a lot of, I think, what we're looking for at this point in the season. Kirill Kaprizov continues his strong push to end the season. Matt Boldy had just a freakishly impressive goal to uh, get things started, his 29th of the season. And... uh, we saw great games again from Murat Huznadinov and Liam Ugrin. And let's like let's keep in mind here at this point in the season, the Kings are still playing for postseason positioning and trying to avoid having to be the team to play the uh Dallas Stars to start off the uh the playoffs. They are trying to fend off the Vegas Golden Knights for third in the Pacific division. And so it's not as though this Kings team was just taking tonight as uh, kind of a night off. They just did not have it here in this one tonight. The wild led from the get go. They scored in all three periods and uh, Boldy gets his 29th. Ryan Hartman scores his 21st and then Kaprizov hits his 45th of the season. Blake Lazat scored with about five minutes left to play, and there was a little bit of a push by the Kings at the end of the game, but that was really that was really it for uh, for Los Angeles. And so, a fun game for the Minnesota Wild. But I want to read you the stat lines of two players in particular for tonight's game. Let's start with Liam Ugrin. He played 15 minutes, 25 seconds in this one tonight. He had a minute 30 on the power play. He finished with four shots on goal and two takeaways in tonight's game. So uh, a great effort by uh, by Ugrin here tonight. And Murat Nadinov, he played 15-39, played two minutes on the penalty kill. He did have one shot, but it uh, did not count. It was a uh, it was a shot that missed the net. So it was an attempt. Uh, he had one block. And he went seven of eleven in the faceoff circle. We'll talk more about those two later because I think we're starting to pencil them into some key spots, special teams wise. That is really exciting um, going into next year. Uh, but you look at like Brock Faber's numbers: twenty-five minutes tonight. He had three shots on goal, had an assist, so he's one assist shy of a forty-assist season, and just continues what is a uh, very solid season for uh, for Brock Faber in his rookie year, exceeding expectations by many, many marks uh, so far this year. But I, I mean, that top line, that top line was just a monster again here tonight. Boldy, his 29th goal, he had four shots in 19 minutes, had a block, had a hit. He had a hit in the first, like, 60 seconds of the game. Um, and Kaprizov had five shots here tonight in 24 minutes. And we're seeing, we've seen the Wilds go with the 11 7 lineup over these last couple of games. And they talked about it in the broadcast here tonight. It's pretty evident that the reason that that's being done is to allow players like Matt Boldy and Kirill Kaprizov the opportunity to play with pretty much everybody on the lineup 
because you're trying to see if there are fits for some of these guys. And, you know, the thing that I think is fun for this wild team is we have seen some nice chemistry from who's and Ugrin um, in their short time together. The time that they have been paired together, um, they, they have looked pretty, uh, pretty darn good out there on the ice. Great start from Philip Gustafson. He stopped 23 out of 24 shots and uh, hopefully is going to be able to take what he has done here down the stretch and translate that into next season. So all in all, some uh, some very good things for the Minnesota Wild here tonight. Um, some things that we've seen all season that just continued here tonight. Nearly two, there were two plays that nearly put me over the edge here tonight. And it was two defensemen who have been talked about extensively this season, both missing empty nets, both from super close proximity that just about put me through the floor. But when you win a game three to one, I guess those are things that don't necessarily factor into the, uh, into the conversation. But I just, I chuckled because especially on the Goligoski shot, Steve Levy was convinced that that shot was blocked. And I'm just sitting, I'm, I'm just sitting at my computer and I'm like, no, it, uh, it was not blocked. It was just a miss. And then John Merrill had one from even closer that, uh, that he sent straight through the crease too. And both times I just, just exhaled, but Hey, looking at the, like, look at the impact players for tonight's game. Matt Boldy, Kirill Kaprizov, Ryan Hartman added a goal, so you get your secondary scoring. And uh, Philip Gustafson had a great start. Brock Faber had an assist tonight. Marco Rossi had two assists in tonight's game. Liam Ugrin and Murat Huznadinov looked really good themselves. And so we're we're continuing to see some of this youth movement, and I have to mention a, uh, I have to mention something that I learned tonight that I had completely forgotten about, but uh, absolutely explains why we have seen the continued play of the likes of Goligoski and Merrill. Let's rewind to the trade deadline. According to Michael Russo. I, I went and looked this up. According to Michael Russo, somebody he uh, somebody asked Russo why we haven't seen any further call-ups by the Minnesota Wild since the trade deadline. You only get four. You only get four post-trade deadline call-ups as a team. And so, Ugrin, who's Nadinov, Volstead, and Beckman. Those are your four. Those were the four players that uh, the Wilds called up. Now, if there were injuries or emergencies, you can obviously call players up on an emergency basis. You can have them loaned up to the uh, to the NHL roster. But that's why that's why we have seen this roster stay the way that it is because you only get four call ups. I legitimately did not know that. Would it be nice to see Adam Beckman play? Yes, but. Honestly, I don't I don't mind getting opportunities to see Ugrin and Huznadinov play with both Kirill and Matt Boldy um, to manufacture opportunities to see those guys played together. That that is that is an okay compromise there for me. But all in all, at this point in the season, I know completely out of it, and the Wilds can do no better than eleventh. Uh, or no better than 12th in the draft. And so at this point in the season, I'm I'm okay with seeing them spoil the parade, at least for a night, of a team that is um that is still pushing for plenty in the playoff picture, basically trying to avoid having to play the likes of the Dallas Stars in the first round of the playoffs. 
So I'm I'm good with I'm good with seeing the team put uh put it all together here at the end of the season and Kirill Kaprizov terrorizing his former teammates here tonight had just that awesome hip check on Kevin Fiala and then he uh he banks the uh the shot in off of the back of Cam Talbot's head to the point that I saw Kings fans saying that uh that it was a lucky bounce it was a lucky bounce for Kirill Kaprizov clearly not paying much attention to wild hockey at all because Kaprizov did it to Ville Husso he um he's done it as well to plenty of others it's 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 in his bag and so i uh you know i don't mind seeing fans kind of melt down at their team losing a game that they probably need and so just just at this point just kind of a fun way to see some of the guys that are going to factor in to the uh, equation next year. Um, and Ugarin and uh, Faber both having a big impact on this one. Bigger impact than Kevin Fiala, who tonight, he was a plus one. He did have an assist, but um, still looks like the, uh, the Minnesota Wild won that trade pretty handily. So all in all, pretty uh, fun one here tonight. And um, just just nice to see the youth have a big impact in tonight's game as well. So a lot to get to here uh, in the postcast tonight. We'll take your comments. We will look ahead to the final game of the season on Thursday. So light them up, fire away with your comments, and uh, we will get to everything here before we're done. Minnesota Wild win by a score of 3-1 to one over the Los Angeles Fialas. And uh, we will take your comments as we continue tonight's Locked on Wild postcast after this. Tonight's Locked on Wild postcast is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Tonight's Locked on Wild postcast is also brought to you by Sleeper. We're down to the final game of the NHL season for the Minnesota Wilds come Thursday. And so one final chance for you to win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, at least for the regular season. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick weather, Kirill, Matt Boldy, Jewel Erickson Eck, Brock Faber, Marco Rossi, Murat Huznadinov, Liam Ugrin will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. It only takes 60 seconds to set your lineup, and you can also play daily fantasy NFL, NBA, MLB, and college football on Sleeper 2. Use promo code Locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Minnesota Wild win by a score of 3-1 to one over the Los Angeles Kings. And uh, we are continuing 
tonight's Locked on Wild postcast. Let's get to your comments here. A lot of Fiala chatter in the uh, in the chat. Um, let's do a quick plug for our uh, f- our friends at Waggle Golf. Courtesy of this sick sunset hat. Not related to the uh, former Arizona Coyotes in any capacity. Just saw it scrolling through. I think it was on Instagram. Saw it pop up and I was like, oh yeah, I, I have to have that. And now I do. So uh, big shout out to Waggle Golf for the sick golf hats. Uh, you can uh, find this one and others at uh, Waggle Golf. Okay, let's let's discuss two things first off. Number one, Murat Huznadinov needs to be the second line center for the penalty kill next year. Like first, my my first demand for him. I think he could be a huge benefit to that team because he brings speed, because he can win faceoffs, and because he's got the defensive acumen um, to be able to handle that role. He played tonight on uh, on special teams, played on the penalty kill. I think he needs to be given the opportunity to lock down that spot. Jewel Erickson X is going to always be your number one penalty killing center. So roll with Erickson Eck and who's Nadinov as your centers. Marcus Felino, when healthy, is going to be one of your penalty killing forwards. So maybe you go Erickson Eck and uh, I don't know. One of the forwards, Erickson Eck and whoever as your uh, as your top penalty killing forwards and then you go who's Nadinov and like Felino as your second your second penalty killers do that and prosper because this penalty kill needs desperately needs some work uh you're not third in the NHL by accident uh third worst in the NHL by accident so that's can that is uh that is demand number one. Demand number two, Liam Ugrin has got to be on the power play from the beginning of next season through the entirety of the season. Whether he be power play number one, probably a little early for that. He could be a fill-in if somebody gets hurt, but he has to be, has to be a staple on that power play unit effective next year. Just really no reason under any circumstances to be throwing the likes of Marcus Johansson, Freddie Goudreau, um, no reason to be throwing any of those guys out there on the power play because guess what? You need to be a shooter or a playmaker to be successful on the power play. If you don't bring either of those to the table, See ya. Adios. That's that that those are those are my those are two demands that I have for next season. For the rest of this season and for next season is Ugrin on the power play and who's Nadinov on the penalty kill. Non-negotiable. I will not hear any exceptions to those two rules. All right, let's get to the comments here. Um because I saw a couple of good ones. Which wild prospects do you think will end up being top six forwards in 2025? I think based off of what we have seen so far, I think you can call both who's Nadinov and Ugrin middle six at worst. If you look, if you want to keep Who's Nadinov as your third center? I'm that's that's fine by me. Um I I am fine with having who's Nadinov behind Marco Rossi and Jewel Eriksson. That's a that is a solid group of centers, in my opinion. 
So who's Nadinov as your third center? Honestly, if Danilo Yurov goes back to Russia for another season, maybe that's a spot that Liam Ugrin takes over is that second line wing spot. If Yurov decides to come here right away and just says, I'm, I just want to, I want to start playing. I'm, I've seen these young guys have some fun and I would love to be in on that. If Danilo Yurov is here in any capacity, that second line wing spot is his at least until we see him start to exceed his development because I just, I I just have really loved what I've seen from Kaprizov, Boldy and Erickson Eck that I would love to see that line just continue that that's, that's a legitimate number one line folks. That's a legitimate number one line in the NHL. I would love to see them continue that development, and that chemistry. So your second line next year is probably probably Zuccarello, Rossi. And if Danilo Yurov is here, his spot, if not, so help me God, it better not be Johansson. Because guess what happened again? Guess what happened again? I have to get the clicker out. Because Marcus Johansson had one shot in 14 minutes, 15 seconds. So we're now up to we're now up to 43 out of 77. 43 out of 77 games with one shot or fewer. Murat Husnadinov has had two or more shots in two of his three games. Actually, it might be all three. Let me just take a quick peek. Uh, yes. All three of his games so far, he's had two or more shots. So his percentage is better than Marcus Johansson's at this point. Um, so please, I beg of you to just not put... Don't put Johansson on that second line again. We don't need to go down that road. Wonder if Zuccarello gets traded if Ugrin and Yurov develop faster than expected. Can't say I want Zuc to be on the third line. I Zuccarello has the trade protection. So he's and he would be, I think, just because of the Kaprizov situation. I think he would be one of the least likely to go. Now, Zuccarello's had an interesting season because his goal scoring got cut in half. He's got 11 goals right now. He still is like third. He still is like fifth on the team in points. But um, I think he ends up staying. I would, I would say. Johansson done like I you buy him off buy him off tomorrow um Freddie probably fourth Freddie probably no higher than the fourth line because you're going to have opportunities um you're gonna have opportunities on the fourth line like I don't think Lucini will be. Uh, I don't think Lucini will be back. Maybe in Iowa, but I don't think you're going to have him back on the NHL roster. Vinny Letary has a two-way contract, so you can easily send him back down to Iowa. Like I, I'm, I'm just going to be. I'm going to be real honest here. I think the fourth line needs to be basically completely different because that fourth line was fine when you had the um when you had the Deweys fourth line was fine when you had the Deweys there but once they were traded the production of that fourth line absolutely mothballed like we're talking about multiple players who have 5 points or less um in like 50 games that's that, that there is no scenario in which that's okay 
So you've got to completely revamp that fourth line. And Freddie Goudreau, put him on that spot because I don't think it's likely that you're going to be able to trade his contract this offseason. Uh, so give him a season to see if you can at least like, see if you can at least give him something to hang his hat on to contribute to this team. Um, so put him on that fourth line. If, if the team wants to, because he's, he's a, he's a vibes guy, he's physical. If the team wants to resign Mason Shaw, you put him on that line as well. And then depending on what happens with Danila Yurov, um, you probably go if Yurov if Yurov does not sign here if he goes to the KHL for one more season put Liam Ugrin up on that second line and then you go or you know honestly if you want to keep trying to develop the Who's Nadinov Ugrin uh chemistry put Ryan Hartman on the second line put um Put Marcus Felino and Liam Ugrin as Murat Huznadinov's um, wings. Something like that. Something like that for a lineup. Um, would be just would just be fleshed out a little better than. Um, where we're at right now. Now, just to kind of piggyback off of this, the team is better without Johansson or Goudreau, or even better, both. If I got to pick one or the other, because here's the thing. It's not like it's a lengthy buyout. Goudreau is still signed for four more seasons, so his buyout would be eight years, six or eight years. I don't want to do that. Marcus Johansson only signed for next year. So you get cap savings next year and you are paying like 660 K for the following season. So Marcus Johansson's buyout is minimal. Like you're not even going to, you're not even going to feel that. And honestly, it gives you the opportunity to just have a little more wiggle room for next year. I would do that tomorrow, but I think this is where if we we're not going to get both, we're not going to get both off the team. So if I have to go one or the other, the easier road to go from a buyout perspective would be Marcus Johansson. And so that would be, that would be the route I would look to go. Um, but yeah, boy, we are having a dialogue in the comments here. Are we still eligible for the Celebrini sweepstakes? No, Freddie, we are not. Uh, the Wilds cannot do any better than 12th in the draft. And so there's no chance that they, there's no chance that the Minnesota Wilds jump up in the draft. Those odds are officially dead. It'll be 12th or, it'll be 12th or somewhere in that general vicinity. Um, Let's just see where it's at after tonight's game. Now the Wilder at 13th, tied with the Philadelphia Flyers. But the Philadelphia Flyers are in 12th because the Wild have more regulation wins or wins in general, whatever the tiebreaker is. Then the Pittsburgh Penguins are in 14th because they have 88 points. So the Wilder in 13th right now, lucky number. 
Really do not mind Freddie on the fourth line. I truly do not know what Johansson gives you. Convince him to go somewhere else. Say we otherwise sit him or just straight up buy him out. He just like the thing that I have heard from, and there are some, believe it or not, there are some Marcus Johansson supporters. The thing that he brings from what I'm told is speed and the ability to occasionally crack into the uh, into the zone on a clean zone entry that's not enough to that's not enough to bring to the table you you got to do better than that um like that 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 is that is not enough to be that have that be your baseline for performance because guess what Murat Huzdadinov brings a ton of speed and he also he also can play on special teams he also can win faceoffs he also can do a bunch of other things and Matthew's dead on here like Johansson can get into the zone on a clean zone entry, but the moment there is even a shred of contact, he loses the puck completely. He had one, I think it was against Vegas, which he barely got touched, and the puck was just in a Vegas player's stick within a split second of getting into the zone. So I like this this team, and this is where this is where some of the talk about getting bigger has come in and you know bigger and or just more physical and not necessarily like not physical as in um not phys- not physical as in like like fight just hold on to the puck hold on to the puck keep the area in front of the net clean this team is just hideously bad in both of those categories. And that's why there have been so many special teams goals scored against the wild this year is because they can't keep the front of the net clean. They, I, I can't wait to go back and look, not because I enjoy dwelling in the negative, but how many games the Minnesota wild have lost because they lost contain in front of the net. It's a lot. They need to be better in the, just having fight department not fighting having fight and just standing your ground defending your territory just need to be massively better in those categories going forward otherwise you're just going to continue to get pushed around by these teams now the wild did win tonight but what happened the last time the wild played the kings they they got just they just get their faces caved in same thing against vegas same thing against winnipeg same thing against dallas same thing against colorado for the most part they just got caved in by all of those teams and the only way that you can level the playing field close the gap is by adding skill the wild needs Need some more skill in the ro- on the roster, but they also just need to be tougher. Bottom line. What do you think Flower will do next year now that he will be an unrestricted free agent? Uh, as was laid out, I think it was Tracy that said it in the comments here. Um, it's Minnesota or bust. Flurry will either re-up for one season with the Minnesota Wilds, or he will um or he will retire one of the two now if he does if he does stay here's here's the logic for flurry staying the logic for flurry staying for one season is to mentor jesper because this is This is really the only way that I see this making sense is 
Flurry signs on for a year. Jesper is the backup. Flurry mentors Jesper for a full season before Jesper gets the full reins the following year. Um, that would be that would be the the logic to have that as a pairing. I don't see a situation necessarily in which Flurry and Gus is your goaltending combo next season because that really doesn't like I uh, that 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 is essentially just like advancing the clock by a year. Um so it's either going to be Flurry retires, then you have Gus and Jasper next year, or Flurry stays on for a year and you cut your teeth with Jesper and you give him a ton of starts and you just let Flurry take him through, talk with him every day. Um, like th- those are the two most likely scenarios that I see playing out. I'm already being told in the comments that it's probably going to just be Flurry and Gus next season and letting Jesper marinade for another season in the NHL. Um, The only thing with that, then again, if he is in the AHL for another season, then his bridge deal is lesser because he's accumulated lesser starts at the NHL level. Um, I, I just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to, I guess, just wait until we get the official word as to what's happening before we speculate any further than that. Um, because honestly, like as big of a question as it is, I feel like that topic has been talked out (laughs) over the last uh, week plus especially. So I would imagine we will know hopefully pretty early into the off season um, as to which way Fleury is leaning. You'd hope that he would let the wild know sooner than later so that this doesn't get dragged out. But um, that's, that's all on Fleury. What do you think the Wilds could get for Gus? Uh, I would say probably in this this range that B Lake is is suggesting somewhere around a second round pick. I don't think unless you get teams in a bidding war, in which case it would maybe be a later a, a later round first round pick, but it's probably going to be more like a second for um, for Gus. And the like the logic being if Jesper is going to be your guy, is Gus going to be um is Gus gonna be the guy to be the backup or the one B? Um that that remains that remains to be seen. That's going to depend entirely on, again, what uh, what Flurry decides to do. Do you think Riley Height comes up and can contribute beyond Beckman? You'd hope so. Um, Height certainly has a ton of prowess offensively, and. Um, I just I feel like that just will play well with this team not having a ton or not having as much skill as they should have. Um, he'll definitely, I think, get that nine game shot to say the least. But like, let's let's be realistic, too, about where Riley Height is at in his process as a. Uh, where is he here? He's 19. 
So I think what you do here, I think this is the perfect scenario. You give him a, a little bit of a taste at some point, maybe early in the season. And then you, like, this is, this is what we've talked about over the last few weeks, especially like giving these guys just a little taste. It doesn't have to be that they play with the team the whole season, but if you can give them a taste, a nine game sample without it counting towards their, um, towards a year of their ELC, great opportunity to just see where they're at and give them, okay, here's what the NHL level is like. Let's just, let's just see where I'm at in the process. And then I can go back to in Heights case. I, I, I don't remember because I think height had technically played in four seasons at the WHL. So I don't know if that means then that he would go to Iowa. Let's just pull up his stats here. Um, yeah, he has played, he played 2021 or 2020, 2021, 2021, 2022, 22, 23, and 23 24. So I think at this point he would go to Iowa. But maybe then, you know, maybe you give him just an opportunity to to learn from what he saw in his first taste at the NHL level. Again, he's 19. So I am perfectly fine with him getting a taste. Micheletti is on it as always. He'd go back to his junior team. So he would go back to the dub. So give him the uh give him the taste and then just let him work on whatever he needs to or if he looks good enough in the that shot just just let him let him do his thing. Let him cook. I, at this point, um, would just, I, I'm way more, uh, I'm way more in favor of just seeing guys take spots and force Bill Guerin to make decisions because like, this is a funny thing too. Like you can say, you can say that these particular players, um, are put you in a better spot to win, but like we see what happens on the ice. And at some point there just is going to be a, there's going to be a point in which you're lying to yourself. If you say that the guys that you have on the ice are giving you a better chance to win than the, uh, the prospects. I, I would be very much in favor of that continuing to kind of push things for this wild roster. Um, let's see here. Ooh, let's get to this from Brett. Then I will uh, circle back to the uh, Charlie Stramo thoughts. Brett Marshall, rookie Liam Ugrin has had a really nice start across his first three NHL games. 42-31 total time on ice. One goal, one assist, eight shots on goal, 11 attempts, three high danger chances, a 0.69 individual expected goals at five on five. He's got a two to one goal share, a 70.6% uh, expected goal share, a 61.3% shot on goal share, 56.7% uh, shot attempt share, and a 70% high danger share. Basically, what that all means is that with um with Ugrin on the ice the wild have outscored outshot their opponents the shots have been in high danger areas more often than the opponent and the shot attempts have outweighed the opponent so it it's not a mirage what Liam Ugrin is doing at this point which i think just kind of further undersells that or further sells that he's going to be on the roster next year. When he says he expects to make the team, 
He's probably going to. Because, like, the numbers just speak for themselves. The eye test matches the numbers. And you're just you're just lying to yourself if you say that having a vet on the roster. And look, it's three games for Uger, and I get that. And there will probably be some games in which we say, yeah, he struggled. But by and large, the thing about young players, by and large, they learn and they grow and they adapt and they add little things to their arsenal. Veteran players have, by and large, peaked. And what you see is what you get, especially with the names that we have talked about at length all season. Like Marcus Johansson's not adding adding anything new to the arsenal at this point. He is either a third of three on a good scoring line, or he is a he is a uh, person wearing a bed sheet with two eye holes cut out as a Halloween costume. Like he's just. He's just there. All right, let's talk to Charlie Strammel. I think I want to hope he can develop, but I'm really worried he will end up being a bust. I am personally, I'm going to give him the year because obviously he was not getting playing time on that Wisconsin team. Mike Hastings tends to gravitate towards upperclassmen. So I'm going to give Strammel the year at Michigan State before I really go one way or the other. Now, I will be keeping an eye on things and seeing how he's doing. So there will certainly be plenty of check-ins as to his progress in his process. Um, and, And if we get to the end of the season... And we are in a similar, we're having a similar conversation at the end of next year that we had this year. Then it's, it's probably time to, uh, probably time to be worried. So that's, that's going to be part of the content, um, for the, uh, the season next year is just seeing how Strammel does in a spot that he maybe gets some more playing time. He's got to do something with that playing time though. So we'll, we'll see how he does throughout the course of the season. Um, what else do we have for comments here? Freddie asking about Jake Gensel and Patrick Kane. Is it plausible to sign Jake Gensel? Uh, Denny, the captain of uh, of the Lockdown Wild comment section, has been driving the bus for Jake Gensel for the entire season. He has it on authority that Gensel is going to sign a league minimum deal with the Wilds for a season to play with his hometown team and then is going to sign an extension after that. That is, that is from Denny. If if that ends if that's how that ends up playing out, he's gonna get the full weight of credits from Lockdown Wild. But at this point, the funds, the funds are the hindrance, ladies and gentlemen. Um, because at this point, you have going into next season, you have 19 players on the roster. And seven million dollars in cap space. So there's some work to do uh, to fill out those spots. Now, Adam Beckman, a restricted free agent, Jake Lucchini, unrestricted, Mason Shaw is a restricted free agent, Alex Goligoski is is gone. Declan Chisholm is a restricted free agent. Dakota Mermis, unrestricted, Mark Andre Fleury, unrestricted. So some of these guys will be back, but seven roster spots to fill with $7 million in cap space. Not a lot. Now the cap is expected to go up. Um, I don't know what the exact figure is, 
But oh, looks like that's been factored in. Terrific. Um, yeah, so you'll have seven million ish in cap space to work with. So my guess is that you end up maybe getting somebody on the back end from a free agency perspective, but um, I I don't think. I don't think we're going to see um I don't think we're going to see any sort of big signings like those two names myself. You need to trade two of the three between Felino Hartman and Gus. And so, um, yeah, that, that's, that's ba you, you would need to move some guys off the roster. So I don't think that'll happen, but I guess we'll wait and see. Denny was right about Dean getting fired. Who knows? Time will tell. Goose for a one by seven. Huh. Oh, that would be all of my, all of my nightmares. Like I, I can't wait to, I can't wait to pull the rip cord on the Alex Goligoski experience and the John Merrill experience and the Freddie Goodrow experience and the Marcus Johansson experience. Like I, I can't wait to just I can't wait to just rip the band-aid off on all of those. Um he, he did I know he did almost have a goal, but he missed an open net and I about died. Like I just I I was laying down on my carpet just with my hands in the air, just cursing into the just cursing into the air. <laughs> experience wild hockey <laughs> uh is there an under the radar prospect you really like it's a great question from adam adam thank you as uh thank everyone for joining here tonight we've got 60 strong an hour after puck um an hour after the game is done in the 81st game of the season if you wanted a really good look as to just how strong the Lockdown Wild listener base is, this is your this is it. This this is this is the sign. This is this is the immaculate answer to that question is that we are still we are still repping the party in game 81 of the season. Um, as far as under the radar prospect, I think since he go, since he is, um, since he is a fellow Husky alum, I'm really excited to see what Jack Pert can do. Um, now obviously that's a little further off, although he is with the, uh, the Iowa wild. So I'm excited to see what Pert brings to the table because this team is going to need a little help defensively over the next couple of years. And there is a real good opportunity for one of those uh, one of those defense prospects to jump in and uh, take over. So that that would be my answer um, to that question would be I'm excited to see what Jack Pert brings to the table. And speaking of the captain, Denny is going to uh, to drop his thoughts in the comments once we uh, once we are finished here this evening. So keep an eye out for that, and uh, we'll we will make sure to uh, respond to them in kind, Denny. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, Ogren looks like a poor man's Landis Gog. 
Could you imagine? That would be that'd be something else. Um, we're we're getting a lot of good mentions for under the radar prospect names. Let me just shout out a few as we um, as we start to uh, to kind of wrap it up here for tonight. We've got a vote for Rieger Lorenz. Um, Alex going with uh, Michael Milne and Rieger Lorenz as well. Another vote for uh, Caden Bankier. Uh, we've got an Ivan Lodnia here. Who else? How, how am I losing my voice? Like, I can feel myself starting to get hoarse. I didn't... I Well, I okay. Uh, maybe the fact that I did actually yell is probably the reason. Um, Vladislav first off. Who else? Milne, Bankier, and Lorenz, future fourth line. Um, who else do we have? <laughs> Our favorite prospect, Raril Raprizov. Raril Raprizov. Um, <laughs> I see what you did here, Sean. I see what you did here. Um, are we going to trade reprise? Are we going to no? that's um, oh, the reprise off comments have me feeling tramped. <laughs> Scooby doo voice. <laughs> Uh, a couple of votes for Siliev. Vegas gets Mark Stone back just in time for the playoffs. Isn't it ironic? A little too ironic. Yeah, I really do think. Um, I really do think it's ironic for Vegas to be getting major reinforcements. Um, let's go to this one. When is Yurov going to play for the Wilds? I hope. Maybe he's just kind of waiting to see. Now, actually, I now that I think about it, they are still in. Um, I did just see on Twitter today. They're still in the playoffs. So Yurov's team is still in the postseason, um, which is probably why he has waited to um which is why he's waited to sign once the season is done and maybe he is kind of keeping an eye on how things go here before he makes the decision if i had to guess i would imagine he goes back to russia for one more season and then after that he's all ours um but I would like to be optimistic that maybe he decides I uh, I'd love to come here. So we'll see. Anybody want to give me a report on risk? Wanted to see a few more games of him in the league. Uh, Raska. Ah, I, I was going to say. You don't mean, surely you don't mean Victor Rask, do you? Um, Raska was, you know, he was, he was fun because he provided that one, um, that one fun soundbite about, oh, are you guys going to still be able to be, uh, to be physical as a fourth line? Oh, don't worry. We will. Uh, that, that made me laugh pretty good. Um, as far as Raska goes, you know, he just he just suffered from I think the same thing that a lot of different players on that fourth line did in which they're just I don't know if they're being asked to do anything um but that that, that fourth line has just been a revolving door of kind of uh a revolving door of mostly empty calories like just just a lot of 
just a lot of minutes with not a lot else attached to them. He's very, he's very young though. Um, what is his, what is his exact age? Uh, he's 22. So he will be Raska will be a restricted free agents after this season. I would imagine he probably stays. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, what else? There's one more. And then I think I'm, I'm done. Since Rossi's name has been popping up in trade circles for some reason, what would be the minimum you would take for him? Oh, um, well, I can tell you that I'm not in favor. I'm not in favor of the logic that I spoke to. That is the reason that he is being shopped. And it's Michael Russo that has been suggesting that the team is at least considering it at this point. Um, the reason that you would trade Rossi is to fulfill what I had talked about is an issue for this team, the size. The reason you trade him is to bring a veteran in that is bigger. I, I don't, I don't want that. Um, <sighs> I don't want that because I think what basically what you need is like we talked about is you just need to be better at like being tough. You need to be better at just being, being able to not just get brushed off the puck. Like I shouldn't be able to go up to Marcus Johansson and go like this to move him away from the puck. Like, now this 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 is something that would be on the table if you could bring in a guy because here's so here's the difference Brady Kachuk is a top 6 guy and he is also a he is in a similar vein to Jewel Eriksson Ek in that he is just a massive asshole out there. Like, it's not going to happen, but I, I just, I, I honestly, the odds of getting something that would move the needle enough as opposed to getting simply a veteran is why I just am not of the belief that um, I just am not of the belief that you're going to be able to get something that justifies moving Rossi, which is why I'm so staunchly against it. I mean, if, if it was, if it was as simple as, okay, give us that and you know, whatever else to make it work, then let's talk. But I, I don't think it's that simple. And I just seeing how this team operates, I just feel like if you make that move for Rossi, it's going to be for somebody and we're all going to collectively react with that's it. It's like, I just get nightmares of some sort of a John Klingberg type. And you're like, huh? So that's why I'm against it. That's why I'm against it. Because like, if, the, if this team simply just... And I know you're pretty backed up against the wall with Capri's off. You can't you can't strip the parts off and, and take a step back because if you do, then you may as well help him pack. So I get that your hands are tied. You really have no choice at this point, but to continue to try to be competitive while using these prospects to show him, Hey, all these glaring holes, Marcus Johansson on line two, 
like we've got guys coming up that can fill those spots that are going to be infinitely better. Like that's, that's where that's the only, that's the only way that you have a choice to go forward. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. Bill Guerin's job a hundred percent is tied to whether or not Kirill Kaprizov resigns here. If Kaprizov leaves, Craig Leopold is going to hold that against Bill Guerin. Um, a hundred percent. He's going to hold that against him because as talented as Kirill Kaprizov is, um, if he leaves, you're going to have a full out fan revolt on your hands. So, um, you got to keep that in mind. And this, we're getting into the part of the equation in which the wild are going to have to start taking a look at that extension. Um, I, Artemi, Artemi Panarin, would he leave New York to head to wilder pastures? I mean, that would be a, uh, that would be a very, very big swing. That would be a massive home run swing. That would be, um, that would be comparable to the Minnesota Timberwolves getting Rudy Gobert. I don't know if those are even remotely related things, but that type of acquisition would be like a head turner. So, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to, since it is 1230 and it is the middle of the week. Well, technically it's a Monday. Well, it's a Tuesday morning. I think I'm going to hit the eject button for tonight's Lockdown Wild postcast. Um, yeah, Denny was right. Denny, Denny has been right on everything that he has predicted has happened this season. Dean got fired. Wild missed the playoffs. The next, I think the next ones for, correct me if I'm wrong, Denny, but I think the next milestones that you had predicted were that Bill Guerin gets fired and something with John Hines. I think those are next. So if those come true, I'm going to have no choice but to start calling you Nostra Denny. If those if those predictions end up coming true, I'm going to I'm going to have no choice. You are going to become Nostra Denny officially. Um So we'll see. But that's that's going to do it for Tonight's Locked on Wild postcast. Again, fun games from Murat Huznadinov, Liam Ugrin, Kirill, Matt Boldy. A lot of fun in uh, this one tonight, and it's always fun to uh, put the Kings in a spot where now they are I think they're going to have to play the Dallas Stars in round one. So they, uh, I'm sure they're going to have fun with that. So one final game coming up. On Thursday, we will have you, of course, got to make the uh, final pilgrimage to the XL Energy Center for the season. So we'll have you covered for that. We'll have you covered for, it'll probably be a, uh, I'm probably going to just go to bed and then record in the morning. So we'll have that for you uh, coming up tomorrow. Um, again, thanks to everybody for tuning in here. It's uh, it's over an hour after the game ended. We've still got 50 people in the stream. So uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Thanks to everybody who's listening to this on uh, your favorite audio platforms. Make sure to hit the like button on your way out. Make sure to leave a five-star review uh, on whichever platform you are tuning into. And uh, we've got you covered here as the uh, rest of the week unfolds. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.